Welcome to our lecture online. So here we have an interesting and somewhat challenging gravitational problem from the JE main test. So let's take a look and see what the problem asks. A solid sphere of radius r gravitationally attracts a particle placed at 3r from its center with a force f1. Now a spherical cavity of radius r over 2 is made in the sphere as shown and the force becomes f2. The value of the ratio of f1 to f2 is, so essentially they're asking for the ratio of the force initially to the force finally after a cavity has been made inside the original sphere. So I think what we should do is we should calculate the force between the gravitational force between the small m and the big M before the cavity is made and then we should calculate the gravitational force between the cavity and the mass. You say, well, wait a minute, how can you calculate the gravitational force of a cavity? Well, it becomes a negative gravitational force in effect because it's removed, right? The particle's removed. And then I think we can go ahead and find the ratio. So, let's try that. First of all, we need to find F1. And F1 is equal to g big M small m divided by the distance squared. So I'm going to write it as distance squared and then we'll figure out what the distance is. Now the mass of the large object is m, the mass of the small object is small m, and the distance between them is a total of 3r. So this becomes equal to g big M small m divided by 3r quantity squared, which is equal to g big M small m divided by 9r squared. So that's f1. Now let's calculate f2. Well, before we calculate F2, we're going to calculate what the negative force is of that cavity. So, force of the cavity is equal to G times, I'll put it like this, well, maybe we'll write as M prime, because I don't know yet what that is, times the small m divided by the distance squared. Now, notice M prime is the mass of the cavity. Now, notice that volume is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now, if the radius goes to half the original radius, then the volume of the cavity is equal to 4 thirds pi times r over 2 cubed, which means it's 1 8, because 1 over 2 cubed is 1 8, times 4 thirds pi r cubed. In other words, the volume of the cavity is 1 8, the volume of the whole sphere, so this becomes equal to g times 1 8, the mass of the whole sphere, times m divided by the distance squared. Now the distance from here to here is 5 over 2r. So we get 5 over 2r and we have to square that. All right, simplifying that, I get g m m over, now 8 goes in the denominator, 5 squared becomes 25, and 2 squared becomes 4 in the numerator, and then we have r squared, and of course this 4 and this 8 becomes 1 and 2, so this gives us g m m over 50 r squared. Now compare that to that, all right, so this is the force between the big sphere and the little object then this becomes the force between the hole and the object. Of course, that's the negative force. And so now we can say that F2 is equal to F1 minus the force due to the, um, why do we have C there? Cavity, huh, cavity, all right. So we end up with GMM over 9R squared minus the force of the cavity, which would be GMM over 50 R squared. Looks like the common denominator is the product between the two. So that this becomes equal to 50 GMM over 9 times 50, which is 450 R squared, uh, minus, that would be 9 GM little m over 50 uh, 450 r squared, so this becomes equal to 50 minus 9 or 41 g big M little m over 450 r squared. 
Well, now we have ourselves an interesting dilemma. So we have F1, we have F2, we want to find the ratio of those two. So now let's go F1 divided by F2, which is equal to F1, which is G big M little m over 9R squared divided by F2, which is 41 G M M over 450 R squared. So the G M M's cancel out. The R squared cancel out. So now we have 1 over 9 times, because I'm dividing by a fraction, which is times by the inverse, 450 over 41. So 9 goes into 450. Well, that goes... Uh, 50 times, so this becomes 50 over 41 as being the ratio of F1 over F2. And do we have that as an answer? And let's see here, F1. over F2. So the ratio is C, I do have that answer. It's right here. C would be the answer. Now, does that make sense? Well, it, tell, it turns out that if we think about it, we know that the force between the object and the full sphere needs to be bigger than the force when we make a cavity in there. So we expect an answer greater than 1, which this is the case. So notice that this one is greater than 1, that's greater than 1, these two are less than 1, so it cannot be A and it cannot be D, it's got to be B or C, and C is the same answer that we got here, so therefore the answer is C, and that is how it's done. <laughs> are you falling asleep? <laughs> All right, well, let's take a look here.